Thank you. Okay. Hope so. All right. We'll start over. This is the uh, city council meeting for um, July 20th, uh, 2021. Let's uh, begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> At our regular recorder, Wes Dilley is not here this evening, so my first order of business is I'm going to appoint or ask Lynn, Council Member Lynn Dumas to fill in as recorder tonight. I'll accept. So, worthy recorder, would you uh, call the roll? Council Member Dumas, here. Council Member Elwood, here. Council Member Graves, here. Council Member Mills. Here. Council Member Pittman. Here. All attendance. And I'll declare a quorum. Um, a couple of things on the agenda, or maybe one thing on the agenda. Uh, I want to move um, the um, resolution to approve us applying for a broadband engineering, engineering study grant. I want to move that up to the first item of new business so that our guest here, Rodney, doesn't have to sit through the whole meeting unless he so desires. So with that change, do I have a motion to approve the agenda? Make so moved. I'll second. Uh, who, Ken, yes. did you move? Jerry, Jerry moved. Jerry, Jerry uh, moved and Linda seconded it. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The agenda is approved. Um, I do not have any minutes uh, to uh, review and approve. Uh, Wes sent them out. Wes sent them. They were Did good. he send them out? Yeah, the 15th right. minutes. All right. I don't yeah. have a copy with me, so. Um, they were distributed. Yeah. They were distributed. Was there any, are there any additions or corrections that anybody noted on those minutes no. as distributed? You want to go ahead and approve them? Then I'll entertain a motion. We approve the minutes. I'll make a motion. I'll second. Okay. Pat made the motion. Linda seconded it. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Minutes are approved. And you can post them on the website. <clears throat> Mr. Sir, Mayor, yes. the notes I have, it, does it need a roll call? Does what? Do, uh, for the minutes? Yeah. Does it need a roll call vote? I don't think so. Okay. The only thing we've ever done a roll call vote on was for ordinances and resolutions. Okay, thank you. Ceremonials, recognitions, <coughs> proclamations, and uh, memoriam. We do have a proclamation. Did she leave? Yeah, Donna left. I, don't, I guess she expected you to do that. But she took the copy of the proclamation. <laughs> oh. uh, well. Is she still there? Is Donna still outside? Can it wait okay. till next week? Uh, next month? Yeah, well, since it's uh, several months late already, uh, Donna Grimes asked that we Donna Grimes asked that we uh, read the Arbor Day proclamation. Arbor Day was April 30th, and uh, Holiday Island is a tree city, and we normally observe um, Arbor Day here and do something in honor of Arbor Day. And um, <clears throat> she brought me a proclamation to read <laughs> and left with it again. So maybe we'll read the proclamation at the uh, at the next meeting. Any other ceremonials, recognitions, proclamations? All right, we'll move on to reports. Um, the financial statements for June are on the website. Um, 
We have not been formally approving financial statements. Um, however, Wes and I are discussing that because I noticed in the Tony, Tonty Town agenda, you know, their standard agenda, they do approve the financials well, monthly. So the DOC it, does too. Right? Yeah, it might not be a legal requirement, but it may be uh, precedence. So maybe by next. By next time, we'll um, we we may officially approve them. The only kind of downside to doing that is that we have the meetings late in the month, and if we don't post the financials until they're approved, then they're pretty much a whole month old before we get them up on the website. So that's the downside of of formally approving the financial statements before they're posted. <clears throat> I have no special committee uh, reports for tonight. We have no old business on the agenda, which brings us to the first item of new business, which is Resolution 2021-003, an approval to apply for broadband engineering study grants. And uh, let me find that. Um, I will entertain a motion to put this resolution on the floor for discussion. Make a motion we put resolution number 2021-023 on the floor. Ken made the motion. Do I have a second? Second. Jerry Pittman seconded it. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Jerry, you want to read the resolution? Uh, yeah. Let me call it up. Come on now. There it is. Here, I'll try to get it up. I've got get it up. No, no. Yeah, thank you. There's one thing I didn't print. Um, resolution number 20, no, 720. Here it is. <laughs> well, uh, the number was wrong on that first one. Uh, it's just 2021. 2021-23. Yeah, 2021-23, resolution authorizing application for a broadband engineering grant. Whereas a sizable number of residents of the city of Holiday Island lack access to sufficient internet connectivity and whereas both the state and federal government have created programs and grants that will assist and help fund rural communities achieve the goal of ensuring high-speed broadband access to residents and whereas the first step in the process would be authorize, authorizing the mayor and or his designees to consult with WISP uh, Management LLC, a Carroll County based company in preparation and submission of an application for a state rural broadband ID grant uh, to pay up to $75,000 for an engineering and feasibility study to determine the need for broadband in Holiday Island design a plan to install fiber optic cables throughout the city and project the costs for implementation and whereas in anticipation of approval of the aforementioned grant in consultation with WIS Management LLC, the city would select the company to perform the study and determine a timeline for its completion and whereas during the time the engineering study is performed, the city should research internet service providers capable of implementing the design plan and the city also should determine additional grant opportunities and other state and federal funding sources to pursue. Uh, now be it resolved by the town council of Holiday, the city of Holiday Island, uh, city council of Holiday Island, 
that the mayor and or his designees are authorized to submit an engineering grant application to determine the feasibility design, design and cost of providing fiber optic broadband <laughs> to the residents of Holiday Island. Passed and approved by the Town Council of Holiday Island, Arkansas on this date, 7-20-2021. Okay, um, Jerry, I'm going to turn the floor over to you and let you kind of lead the discussion on this and tell everybody what what's involved and uh, and how our guest maybe introduce our guest for okay. officially into the record and uh, just a little bit of background. Uh, as many of you know, the and as the, the resolution indicated that the, the government, both federally and with the, in the state, have uh, allotted several million dollars, if not billions, uh, to provide rural broadband. And uh, as I said, the first stop, the step is to do this engineering study to assess the need which uh, would be will be no surprise to anybody if there is a dramatic need with the spotty service that we have and uh, the number of uh, miles of roads and the uh, wooded and mountainous terrain. Uh, we've got to die. Rodney, you want, we don't, oh, you want him at the podium? Oh, he can sit right or here. Sit right there. That might sit be right good. Here? The guest, you can sit at the big table. Oh, <laughs> the grown up. <laughs> uh, our, our guest is uh, Rodney Balance of uh, Berryville. Uh, uh, he's the owner and creator of Berryville. Uh, tell everybody what you're. <laughs> <laughs> well, I own Berryville Broadband. Okay. And also Wisp Management, a consulting and engineering company. And he, he's working uh, throughout Carroll County to provide, uh, initially he was doing uh, uh, wireless uh, uh, service uh, to customers uh, in north of Berryville, south of Berryville. Uh, the problem here is you have to have a line of sight from a tower to the homes and that, that would just not be feasible. So. Uh, He's been successful uh, working uh, th this grant process and has gotten one approved. Yes, yeah, okay. we received and, a grant in February for the state. Yeah, and uh, so I know that, that we've expressed interest and in, in other uh, municipalities in, in Carroll County uh, have expressed interest. And uh, so... Uh, <clears throat> This grant uh, application, we're on a kind of a tight deadline to get it submitted. Uh, and we would work with Rodney to uh, uh, fill out the grant application, provide supporting documents, and uh, if approved, and hopefully it would be approved uh, uh, through with consulting with Rodney, we would select an engineering company and uh, they would they would do a, the feasibility study, which would be to, uh, you know the uh, to see how it would be designed and what it would cost. And at that point, uh, just as the resolution says, we would have to provide uh, 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 select uh, a provider to work with, uh, and he would consult us on that and. He would be our partner in that. Uh, if you want to, if you want to look at the grant uh, application and the, what documents are uh, uh, are, ne or will be for submitting, uh, you can go on the website and Linda, where are they? You want me to pull that up? Um, I can pull it. Yeah, up. we can. Mm -hmm. uh, it's posted on the website, though. Yeah, right? they're on our uh, cityofholidayisland.com on the website. If someone wants to go to the meeting docs, it's in the meeting docs. 
Yeah, you can show everybody where it is on the website, but it's like 180 pages, so hmm. yeah, it's we're, it's, a, it's we're not going to uh, go through the grant application. No, <laughs> but no, but this is what the what's on the website that, that I'm going to show you here in a second. Okay, man, well, is the 75,000 a maximum amount that they might award, or is that the determined amount that we're going to need because of our terrain and locale? This particular grant is maxed out at 75,000. Okay. It includes feasibility and engineering studies, as well as actually receiving the blueprints from the engineers that we bring on board to design the network for us. Okay. Uh, just, do you mind if I continue, Jerry? Sure. Oh, go ahead. I just completed the application with the city of Berryville, doing the exact same thing for particular areas in their uh, in their municipality, and we work closely with with the folks in Little Rock who oversee the grant. Because every every municipality and government entity that is eligible to apply for this money, everybody has a little bit different uh, need. For example, over there we had a combination of uh, a poverty level and a business park that they've recently launched with no internet whatsoever. Here we may need more to look toward uh, un underserved medical situation. Uh, you know, it might be, uh, and then of course, you know, we, we don't know until I get talking to people, but just kind of uh, guessing uh, just because of the average age of the population of Palo Alto Island, it might be more feasible for us to apply from a perspective of underserved medically than, than impoverished, for example. Uh, are, you, are you going to? We, are we contracting with you to uh, complete the application for the grant, or are you going to do the study? Um, I will assist in in putting together the grant application. Okay. And, but the contract is for actually conducting the study and hiring the engineers to do the work. Oh. So okay, I'll, so the study will actually, actually be performed by an engineering Go. By certified engineers, yes, sir. Okay. What? What? What's? <laughs> Boy, we need younger people on this. <laughs> I don't. I don't fully understand broadband anyway. But what is the cost, roughly, of preparing the uh, application for a grant? Uh, what's the deadline? Because Jerry mentioned the deadline's coming up rather quickly. And if we get the grant for seventy-five thousand. Just a wild guess. Is that enough to cover the engineering study that has to follow? The engineering, I don't know. I don't know if it's going to cover all the engineering, but it will cover enough to where we can apply for larger grants to actually begin the work. And out of some of that grant money, we can continue the engineering and getting the blueprints as we develop the the network. Okay. Is this going to be fiber optic then? Yes, or fiber to the home is what I recommend. Okay. Lane, are these grants 100% uh, funded by the government with no participation from the city? Yes, sir. That's correct. Okay. Well, there's a whole bunch of that out there in that disaster aid or whatever. That, what, what's, again, do we have a deadline for, for completing the application or the uh, I believe the right. deadline right. that uh, Jerry referred to was uh, they're they're having the state they're having their monthly uh, approval meeting in a few weeks, okay. and we'd like to get it in so that we can get the project rolling. And if you look at the documents, what's the cost of preparing the application for the grant, roughly? You know, I'm zero. zero. I, I, oh, okay. I'm, I'm, I like that. Another comment. another volunteer. Another exercise, volunteer exercise. exercise. If right. we get the grant, the seventy five thousand dollar grant, it covers your costs, right? Yes, ma'am. And, and <laughs> but it also it also covers for an employee of the city to coordinate with me. We put together a task force made up of community residents, um, politicians, business owners whoever are impacted. And that task force oversees the implementation of the whole program of, the, of this grant. So we want to make sure we, it's not just, hey, you know, give me the money and I'll take care of you. This is a, 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 
hand-selected group of professionals that will coordinate with me so that we can educate as well, because that's one of the things we're gonna need to do is educate you guys on exactly what is broadband. How is it gonna, how is it gonna change your life? How is it gonna make things different? Because if folks are, are faced with a situation of switching from a cable company who also provides internet to an internet company, then how am I gonna get my TV? Uh, how am I gonna do my telephone? All of these things. So I want to make sure that the city leaders are well versed and educated in these things. And then with the eventual grants that come about, education to the public is also included in those grants. But we'll put you guys at the forefront of knowledge, enabling you to be able to answer questions. And, uh, and Dan and I talked this afternoon, and that's his intention is to assemble a team to, to work with uh, Rodney. Uh, the, you, okay, this, this, Endeavor would replace Cox, and which Cox right now has cable over part of part a very small part of Holiday Island. You, you, after the after the feasibility study and the engineering is done, you may decide you want Cox to come in and put the fiber in for you. Uh, it's your choice at that point as to what provider you want to use. Okay. Uh, you know, I'll work closely to you know help you make a good decision as to who can focus on and provide exactly well, what you Well, I need. remember we tried to get them to expand their coverage and they chose not to. Right. It, but that's, that's one thing that the engineering study will show is how many people do not have uh, you know, internet, whether it's broadband or not, they don't have internet access. Yeah. Well, I can and tell you right now, we get applications from Holiday Island every week for people wanting internet because they don't have any other options. I've heard, go back I've heard as many there. as 500 people or 500 homes in Holiday Island, Cox hasn't run cable to and won't unless you pay them yeah. a well, couple thousand dollars on up. Whatever they put in and I don't know when they put it in, but they, they've never chosen to expand. Kim, you need to speak into the mic a little bit more because I don't think we're picking up your sound in the mic. I just, I just said that Cox has chosen never to expand their network. I mean, they just kind of just said, no, we're not interested. Yeah. Um, uh, I have a question. Uh, with regard to Cox and the cable that they have strung out here to where they've strung it, um, that's not fiber optic, right? That's correct. And it's not as fast as fiber optic, correct? That, that is correct. Was well, that correct? Okay. So if, if we were to, and your thought is perhaps to put fiber optic to all the locations in Holiday Island. Yes, ma'am. My goal is to provide, uh, Carroll County has zero homes with fiber optic cable to them right now. My goal and, uh, <laughs> And we're, I met with our, our county judge this morning, his as well, is to turn that around so that all of Carroll County has access to fiber. Uh, the the uh, electric co-ops across the state have taken it upon themselves and taken a lot of grant money to provide fiber optic cable to people using their existing poles and easements. <laughs> Carroll Electric has chosen not to do that. However, they have chosen to sign a contract with me and my internet company to use their poles to provide that internet to their customers. So I'm very thankful to have that, that pole attachment agreement with them, which enable us to reach any customer they have. Another question. Um, with regard to the cable company, Cox, um, if, if you put fiber optic all over Hi Holiday Island, could Cox use that to run their cable service rather than their current cable and have a better service? Is that something that would benefit Cox in the long run? I mean, whether you put it in or Cox puts it in, if it's fiber optic. Well, it would be, it would be a business agreement between the two entities that put it in, uh, whether Cox wanted to lease access to the fiber or, or if 
in, we provide internet through the fiber. My, so, my, yeah, my question is more like, is it a vehicle that will carry cable TV? Oh, yes. Fiber optic? Oh, yes. Yeah. We, I, I had it in Oklahoma. I can tell you, my TV, my telephone, and the computer somehow were all integrated. Okay. And I could answer the telephone on the TV if I wanted to. It's well, incredible. Okay. Everything nowadays is internet based. Uh, the, the days of cable companies and telephone companies are going the way of the dinosaur. Uh, the, the internet is the vehicle by which all medium travel. And the using the, using the antiquated copper systems of, of telephone companies and cable companies just prevent us from being able to access the speed and the bandwidth that is needed for so many things today. What, what fiber kind of, optics would open that up and just explode. Just what kind of speed are they getting with fiber now? Well, we built our network on a 10 gigabit per second okay. platform. When I was laying cable uh, fiber optic, I think we were getting one meg. It was, was, was the maximum. Uh, just a, a couple of points as a matter of definition. Um, whether it's coaxial cable or fiber optic cable, I don't think is important to the government when it comes to their goal of making broadband accessible because uh, Cox, you know, and tell me if I'm wrong, but their, their definition of broadband is, is uh, 25 <coughs> megabit download and three megabit upload. And anybody that has Cox cable out here have, probably has that. And so by definition, I think if you have Cox cable here, you have broadband and you would not be one of the underserved people that the state of Arkansas is looking at helping with this yeah. program. So I think our focus is going to be more on the you know, third of our population that has no service. And, um, you know, that I think is, is, uh, is going to get us, you know, more attention. I, than, I don't know what percentage it is. It, it's, it's most of the backside, I think, isn't it? I, he said oh, 500 homes. There's, there's people on top of Rocky Top in your neighborhood that don't have it. And there's folks on Appaloosa that don't have it at the end of it the top mm -hmm. so um, you know that that's my goal in this project is to make sure that everybody in holiday island has internet if it's fiber optic it's got a lot more potential obviously than if it's just coaxial cable but if it's at least basic coaxial cable people could do you know the basics and with cox if you have the cable run into your house, you can buy more bandwidth or more speed or whatever it is. You can pay for more. So um, it, it just might not be, you know, the, the advantage Cox has is there's no competition out here. So they can charge whatever they want to. If you want to upgrade your system, they, and they if you want to work from home and, and you have a lot of data to upload and download or you have to stream a lot of things or something, you know, they kind of got you, you know, they can charge whatever they want. Belinda, you read some numbers once at Rotary about the number of kids that live here, which would surprise people. Uh, I can't remember that number if you're asking me. But well, there, there was a lot. There, there were almost 100 school-age kids that live in Holiday Island. Mm -hmm. They either go to Eureka or I mean, some may go to Berryville or, or whatever. And with more and more schools doing uh, virtual classrooms, and uh, I, I would think that would also be a, a criteria that we could uh, mention. If you don't have the internet as a student anymore, you are really handicapped. So, and as far as population count, it's more than just the 500 homes. It's all the lots in between that could be homes at one day. A lot of lots, lots of opportunities. That's a really good point because they're flying off the market as we speak. Right. right. So, so that you know, that's why we need the engineering study. Yeah. One other point about the the seventy five thousand. 
it's a, a concern that Wes and I had. Um, usually with these grants, you know, and especially with this COVID money, um, they give you the money, they let you spend it, and uh, you don't have to get pre-approval necessarily on you know what you're spending it on. But if after all the money is spent, you can't prove that it was spent correctly, wisely, and you got something for the money, then you got to pay it back. And we were wondering, you know, do we have the authority to um, accept grant money that could eventually be a $75,000 liability and because something could go wrong. Hmm. And, um, and we don't have the reserves to cover a $75,000 uh, mistake. So, uh, but in the grant application or in the grant paperwork, it says that I think the very first thing you have to do after you're awarded the grant is to provide a bond to cover whatever amount of money they give you. So there is a there is going to be some financial requirement on our part. I have no idea what a seventy five thousand dollar bond uh, would cost us, but I don't know. We had to get a bond for or the city of Eureka Springs had to get a bond for the ambulance service, and that was like two fifty, and it it wasn't that it was like a thousand dollars maybe. If not. Now, you know, we don't need that until we're awarded the grant and get the money. So we have time to worry about that. And if, if it turns out that we can't get a bond or that it's too expensive, we can always <laughs> turn down turn down the grant money. Uh, the other thing about timing on this is that this is coming through the University of Arkansas Medical Center, a medical school, and because there's a need to service rural people, you know, medically online. So they got a they got a big chunk of money that they could use, and they divided it up into seventy five thousand dollar grants. There's a finite number of grants, and this program has been going on already for over a year. Yeah, the actual deadline is it was June thirtieth. Right. Uh, that, that was when he asked the question that says in the application that it's a fluid number. It keeps. They keep moving the end date, yeah. so but, you know, that's uh, but not what they haven't. But but what's not fluid is how big the pot is. Uh, no, that's right. <laughs> when the money some, is gone, it's point. gone. There were, so, there were thirty of these grants available. Right. So we got a and and you know we know of at least you know well but, uh, we we're pretty sure Eureka Springs is going to apply, and Berryville already has. So and, and the county is also and applying. the county. So you know. Just in Carroll County, we're snapping up or trying to snap up three or four of them. So, you know, yeah. if we don't get in there pretty quick, the money will be gone. Yeah. But Rodney, wouldn't it be fair to say that the the point about the liability that this is probably the uh, lowest risk of any of the steps is the engineering study? I mean, yeah, there is no risk. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. That I mean. It might show that we can't do it, that it's not feasible, but I mean, that would not be spending it uh, unwisely. So, yeah. Well, and, you know, hopefully it would be scalable. So, you know, if the whole project is going to cost $5 million and we don't have access to $5 million, we may have access to a million. We'll, we'll see how far that takes us. Well, the point of this grant. In the, in the way it was explained to me by the folks in Little Rock, is to put all of your pieces of your puzzle together to help you apply for the larger grant mm -hmm. that would enable us to actually do the work and physically lay the cable, thereby no money out of the pocket of the city. And so this is just the first step of determining where the fiber needs to go. And we've already identified 500 homes and probably maybe that many more empty lots. Um, and, and we've identified that now there's uh, school-aged children that need access as well as the medically underserved. So these are very valid points from which the grant is, or by which the grant is uh, designed. So we hire the, 
And the great thing about this is I'm, I'm your contact. I educate, I hire the engineers, the engineers do their part. I present to you and we talk about how the best way to lay it all out is. You don't have a bunch of different people to deal with and you know you're gonna end up with some blueprints at the end of it, that's the deliverables. You know, the blueprints and the feasibility study of, okay, what's it gonna cost? How are we gonna get the money? Okay, we're gonna apply for this reconnect grant of $6 million to put in, however, or 3 million or whatever it's gonna to be to put in X number of miles of fiber. So that's kind of how it all fits together. Any other questions for um, Rodney? Do you own the engineering company then? I, no, sir. The engineers, um, there's, they, the state gives us a list of engineers that, they, that are approved. And then there's uh, another, well, there's an engineer actually out of Georgia we're using for the city of Variable. Yeah. Um, but they have representation here in, in Arkansas. It's not an Arkansas-based engineer group, but they do work in, in Arkansas. So uh, the engineers will be, uh, the task force and I will, agree on the engineering firm to actually do the work and then i'll pay them out of what the contract price is for me to oversee everything okay i have another question um jerry mentioned that you already got one grant approved yes ma'am and who was that with that was a grant for setting up a fixed wireless network north of variable and that was the state, it was the same people that are doing this grant. It was through UAMS okay. and uh, it was a couple hundred thousand, but um, they liked the way we did the job and uh, were very encouraging of us applying for more grants. Okay, so you're, are they about to undertake that project then? Or? It's already completed. The project is completed. Yes, we finished it three months early and all inspections have been done and Good. everything was, how many, how many people are served by that one? Up to 200. Okay. Good. You mentioned a financial transaction that you would pay the engineers. So our resolution says that we would consult with you. So you would submit invoices to us for what you spent. That's how we would handle the transaction so that we could show where the money went. Sure. Yeah, the, uh, we're, we're, we're gonna be the consultant, the, the link to you to the experts okay so that we know we bring in the right people and your task force will work with me to make sure that everything gets done appropriately so all the money that we would get from whatever grant is given us would be written checks to you and you yeah, would disperse a, it to your sources correct it'll okay. be a contractual agreement between wisp management llc and city of holiday Island. okay and we'll bring that contract back before the council before we sign you know, saying anything. One so. more. Um, are we, when, if, if we get the engineering study done and it shows that we need to do some work, are we required to bid out the work to like Cox, him, whoever? Do we, are we supposed to get multiple bidders to actually perform that, laying the cable and I, giving I us. would, you know, that's step two. Yeah. And I would guess that that would be dependent on whatever strings are attached to the money that, that we come up with, you know, there'll be more grant applications. Those grant applications will have requirements. Mm -hmm. I would assume that one of the requirements is competitive well, bidding. I, I would think even state law would require that we put out Westford. Sort of what my thought was. Although I mean, there are there are exceptions <laughs> for professional services when when a special skill is required and stuff like that. You know, if there's you do an RFQ. Yeah. I, if I, there aren't that many people that string. No, um, no, I, I agree. And like he said, it could be an RFQ, and yeah. just like we did the attorney. Yeah. Actually, when. When I went to the county judge to apply for this grant and work with the county for this grant we just finished, um, I, I, the, the internet company is the one applying for the grant. The internet company comes to you and says, hey, you know, I'm going to apply for this grant. Can we partner on it? And I'll, I'll do the work for you. Um, 
that's how it worked in that in that grant. Now I'm assuming it'll be the same way, but you would have the task force there to advise you what you know how to how to move forward with that. We didn't need to do any RFQ or any kind of bidding because. So if their if 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 their grant in Barryville is approved, and they do the study, then they there's an agreement with Barryville that you will install their project. I told them right up front. I said, I want you guys to choose the best internet provider for you. You know, just because just because I'm the consultant and I have and I happen to own an internet company, doesn't mean you have to give the uh, you have to give the job to my internet company. I want you to decide what's best for you. And I want to tell you guys the same thing. Um, <clears throat> there are other internet companies, there are other companies that do internet. You have a cable company right here that does internet on the side. So you can decide which company you want to provide the internet for you and to do this work and to partner with to apply for additional grants. So it's, it, it, if, if ABC internet company comes to you and says, hey, we're applying for a $5 million grant um, based on this, uh, this engineering study you just received. You want to partner with us and we'll do the work. It doesn't cost you anything. Well, is there a rule that says you have to put a bids out to do that because you're not spending any money? The grant is coming from the state. The ISP is coming to you and you just say, you know what, so you get us some internet. So it's, it's, it, it's totally different than if you're spending city funds. Yeah. So, but anyway, we'll, we can address that and get exact answers and laws that relate during this feasibility study. Okay, anything else? You need a motion? Yeah, I need a motion then to approve the resolution. I'll so move. Pat made a motion to approve resolution 2021-023, the resolution authorizing application for a broadband engineering grant. Do we have a second? Second. Jerry Pittman seconded it. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Mr. Mayor, we need a roll oh, call. Roll call vote, sorry. Council Member Elwood? Here. Uh, aye. I'm sorry. Council Member Graves? Aye. Council Member Mills? Aye. Council Member Pittman? Aye. Council Member Dumas, aye. All right, the uh, resolution uh, is approved and now Jerry has something to do at night. <laughs> <laughs> and like Jerry mentioned, we'll be pulling together some, uh, as we always do in Holiday Island, we'll pull people out of retirement that have expertise in this field and uh, just in general grant writing, we've already got a couple of people that have um, volunteered to um, to help write the grant, and I know of one gentleman that I talked to after the Hi Ha meeting that uh, seems to have some pretty good insight into who does and who doesn't have uh, cable in Holiday Island right now. So, and I'll get in anecdotally, touch with him. I had someone uh, after this showed up on the agenda. Uh, Approach me and volunteer who has experience. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, he's the gentleman's talked to you. Uh, I won't mention his name right now, but. Okay. Well, thank you for coming over. Thank you thank all you. for letting me be here. Yep. Great to see you again. And uh, you'll just get with me and we'll get yep. some time. All right. Now that we're finished with variable, I can focus with you guys. All right. <laughs> thank you, Rod. Thank you, Jerry. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Rod. Thank you, Next item on the agenda is Ordinance 2021-006, appointing the City Council as the Interim Planning Commission. Do I have a motion to put the ordinance on the floor? Well, wait a minute. Um, let, me, uh, let me do this first here. I'll entertain a motion to, dis to suspend and dispense with the rule requiring a reading of the ordinance in full on three different days. So if I could have a motion, because we have an emergency clause in this in this uh, ordinance, so if I could have a motion to uh, 
suspend the rules on reading the ordinance on three different days? I'll move that we suspend the the, the rule the rule on the or, on reading, reading the, ordinance. the ordinance on three different days. Yeah, yeah. nobody wants to make that motion. Yeah, that's, that was a mouthful. To say that. Yeah. Do I have a second? I will second it. I don't have to repeat it. Okay. Uh, so since this is a ordinance, we'll do a roll call vote. Councilmember Dumas, aye. Councilmember Elwood, aye. Councilmember Graves, aye. Councilmember Mills, aye. Councilmember Pittman, aye. All okay. eyes. So the motion carries. Now I will entertain a motion to place Ordinance 2021-006 on the floor for consideration. I move to place the ordinance on the floor. Linda made the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Lynn seconded it. Uh, I suppose roll call vote again. You just, on this checklist, it's just a, uh, a voice vote. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right. I will read the ordinance, unless Lynn, unless you want to. Oh, go ahead. All right. Thank you. Ordinance number 2021-006 an ordinance establishing the members of the Holiday Island City Planning Commission for the City of Holiday Island, Carroll County, Arkansas, declaring an emergency and for other purposes. Whereas the Mayor of Holiday Island has conferred with the current Planning Commission incorporated formerly the Committee for Ar Architecture membership con concerning their current practices, involvement, and regulations regarding the preservation of the terms and conditions included in the property units, declaration of reservations, sometimes known as the covenants within the Holiday Island municipal boundaries, and whereas the need to ensure that the city will, in a timely manner, adopt and enforce plans for the coordinated, adjust, adjusted, harmonious development of the city of Holiday Island and its environs and the activities associated with urban planning and whereas the city council of holiday island adopted ordinance 2021-002 on may 18 2021 that established the holiday island city planning commission with two options of how the first commissioners shall be chosen and approved and whereas ordinance 2021-002 section 3a established that the Holiday Island City Council can serve as the Holiday Island City Planning Commission and on the Zoning Board of Adjustment. And whereas the City Council has determined that it is in the best interest of the City of Holiday Island that the first City Planning Commission members be the Holiday Island City Council to complete adequate studies through discussion and appropriate public input and disclosure submit rep recommendations regarding development and redevelopment policies, general and specific plans, ordinances, and regulations. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Holiday Island, Arkansas, that Section 1 City Planning Council members determined pursuant to Arkansas Code of 1987 annotated 1456-404, the method in the City of Holiday Island Ordinance 2021-002, Section 3A shall be adopted, especially, uh, establishing that the City Council shall serve as the Holiday Island Planning, City Planning Commission. Section 2, City Zoning Board of Adjustment members determined, pursuant to Arkansas Code of 1987, annotated 1456-404, the method in city in city of holiday island ordinance 2021-002 section 3a shall be adopted establishing that the city council shall serve as the holiday island city zoning board of adjustment section 3 emergency clause the need to make use of the provisions of title 14 chapter 6 subchapter 4 of the arkansas code of 1987 annotated as amended to add members to the City Planning Commission in order to be begin the process to adopt and enforce plans for the coordinated, adjusted, harmonious development of the City of Holiday Island and its environs, environs 
and the activities associated with urban planning is immediate and an emergency is hereby declared to exist and this ordinance shall be in full force and effect from the date uh, from after the date of its passage passed and approved by the City Council of Holly Island Carroll County Arkansas on this date of July 20th 2021 Okay, we have to do something special with handling the emergency clause. I don't think so. Okay. <clears throat> All right. I think everybody knows that um, the purpose of this, the purpose of starting out with the city council being the planning uh, commission is in order to um, plan and execute a transition. Uh, as the uh, ordinance states, we, uh, the, the community has a functioning planning commission that's not a, um, that's not a, a part of the city. Um, they issue building permits. They try to enforce building codes, although they have no inspection uh, process or inspector. Um, they try to enforce the covenants, although they have limited authority and ability to do that. However, they have a system, and that system is functioning, and it's never prudent to turn the one faucet off until you know you have water coming out of the other faucet. So um, that's the point of the, uh, of, of the city council. It is possible, I suppose, that the city council could be the planning commission forever. However, I think that it's probably un unlikely that once this transition is executed and the city has their ordinances in place and up and running and we have a functioning um, code enforcement officer and building inspector and things like that, that um, we would then um, take that responsibility away from the city council and give it to um, a permanent planning commission with other members, um, which would be basically option A in the, in the original ordinance. So um, do we have any discussion on this? You I, all... I think that it's a good idea. I don't, I don't, necessarily relish the idea of doing it, but uh, we got to do it. It's something, we, it has to get started. Right. And we are the people that can do it easily. Uh, you know, we have instructions that Lynn has provided early on in our formation of a city council that instructs us in how to go forward. Lynn pretty much knows what we need to do. Uh, so if we follow Lynn's guidance, <laughs> I think we'll get it done. And this will be a test of Lynn's leadership yeah. capability. <laughs> we, can, we, can some, we can get some ordinances on the book books that we need to make to fulfill this goal of Holiday Island. All right. This is this is this really is the other reason why we incorporated. You know, first reason was to bring money in. We got that working. That that's going. Um, this is the second thing, and and you know, it, it it's the need is only getting worse every day. We got houses going up. I, I trust that the builders are doing a great job, nah. but um, <laughs> but we you know we have buildings going up all over Holiday Island uh, in places that I didn't even know. I drove past one the other day. I didn't even know there was a house going up on that street. Don't even remember where it was, but uh, um, we really do need to have a you know building codes and a building inspector. We need to have health and sanitation codes and uh, and a code enforcement officer. And it's our duty in the law to do that. Yeah, we just got to get it on the book. This, yeah, my, this this document there, the deliverables for the city council acting as a transitional. Yeah, that's basically still. The guideline, um, Lynn is already, you know, taking mentally at least, <laughs> taking the next step and starting to uh, put together um, first actions for the planning commission to take, like um, you collecting know, officers, 
selecting officers, Setting record our keeping, kind of the same thing we went through when we set the city up initially. How are you going to conduct business? And um, that'll be the first order of business. And with that said, when we get to um, commissioners or uh, to uh, scheduling at the end of the agenda, even though that's intended to schedule future city council meetings, I think it would be an opportunity for us to pick a date for our first planning commission meeting. Then. I'd like to also say that for the benefit of the, the public that the city council meetings are totally separate from city planning commission meetings. So we'll have our own agendas, we'll have our own uh, separate meetings and announcements. Uh, the information we share will be kept separate because the two the two uh, entities have to work independently and then share the commission makes recommendations to the council. So it will sound a little bit maybe repetitive that we just did this last week, you know, we're doing this tonight. Well, it's the method we have to follow to follow the law. So they will be separate. So right. will the ordinance be posted on our bulletin boards and this ordinance? Yeah. Yes, this is a city but ordinance it will here. Take effect like today. Yeah. Tonight. Mm -hmm. All right. If there's no other discussion, I will entertain a motion to approve ordinance 2021-006 an ordinance establishing the members of the Holiday Island City Planning Commission for the City of Holiday Island, Carroll County, Arkansas, declaring an emergency and for other purposes. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve uh, uh, ordinance 2021-006. Ken made the motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Linda seconded it. Any further discussion? Roll call vote. Councilmember Graves? Aye. Councilmember Mills? Aye. Councilmember Pittman? Aye. Councilmember Dumas? Aye. Councilmember Elwood? Aye. The ayes have it. So resol or, um, ordinance 2021-006 <laughs> is approved. Congratulations, Planning Commission <laughs> members. <laughs> Next on the agenda is a resolution, a resolution approving, or a, a resolution amending the 2021 budget. Uh, it's resolution 2021-022. So I have a motion to place this on the floor for consideration. So moved. Second. Lynn made the motion. Jerry Pittman seconded it. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. I'll read the resolution. Resolution number Okay. A resolution amending the city uh, of Holiday Island, Arkansas 2021 operating budget. Whereas the city of Holiday Island, Arkansas city council is required by law to approve general and street fund annual operating budgets. And whereas resolution 2021-005 established the city council's approval of the budget presented by the mayor. And whereas recognizing that the budget as presented and approved was based on estimates as to the timing and amounts of anticipated revenue, as well as estimates on expenditures. And whereas six months of actual revenue and expenditures now provides a history upon which a more accurate budget can be presented. And whereas the Holiday Island Suburban Improvement District, HICID, and the City of Holiday Island have jointly agreed to suspend the 2021 road <laughs> resurfacing program due to contractor job backlog. And whereas it is in the best interest of good governance to operate within a budget that more closely represents actual anticipated revenue and appropriations 
now be it resolved by the City Council of Holiday Island, Arkansas, that the operating budget for the general and road funds for the balance of 2021 be adjusted to reflect the following. General fund estimated revenue, $181,541. And uh, appropriations, $123,318. Street fund, $145,830 in revenue and $44,000 in appropriations for a total of $337,371 in revenue and $167,318 in appropriations. I don't know what you're reading from, that's but not it's not the, the one we got. Correct. It's the one I've got. Did you send out a newer version? This is the one that Wes, yeah, this is the one I should have sent out like today. But you didn't get it. Well, it, it's not posted and I, I didn't see it time, I guess. So. I, it's not the one on the screen. No. So we'll have because to get the other one posted. If you add that one up, the revenue doesn't add up to three four yeah. or something. Like three hundred and four thousand. So it just I wanted to point out there are some different numbers on the newer yeah, versions. Yeah, that that um, that must have been a older draft. The numbers you read do mathematically add up to the right totals, same totals in revenue. Yeah. The one I'm reading from is the one that Wes provided me with. So. I don't know where that copy came from. I must have pulled that out of. So just read again point. what the totals are. Here. Revenue, you got it? Okay. One, two, so how do we get a smaller number if both of the general fund and street funds are bigger? Well, you added these up and it stood out. Okay. Maybe this didn't add up. It didn't. <laughs> okay. You want to copy the bullet? Yeah, wait, wording. In 337 to 371. Okay. This bullet's not? Yeah, that's two. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right, passed and approved by the City Council of Hol Holiday Island, Arkansas, on this date of 720. 2021. Other than the fact that there's an old copy, an inaccurate copy floating around out there, I have the copy that will be signed and posted. So, uh, is there any other discussion on this? Hey, I, am, I am adding the revenue column, and it looks like 327, 371 would be the right sum. Eight and four is twelve. I don't have the figures. So I don't know what I'm I know that one up there doesn't add up. I was I was also um, thinking, wouldn't it be better if we just had a whole new budget page rather than just these adjustments to look at? I mean, or to post on the website so people knew what it said. Well, well, you can have the resolution with this, but couldn't we have an accompanying? full budget page that's redone? That would basically be the last financial statement on the... Well, it doesn't show the budget. Uh, it kind of does. No. kind of does. But Going forward, it does. He's got the, the full year cash flow. Oh, but has he made ex uh, adjustments and expenses to where won't exceed the budget on the new, new yeah we're not required to do this because we're not exceeding any um, any expenditures it was uh, it, it was just seemed to be a good idea because you know the budget is turning out you know uh, the actual is turning out to be uh, different than the original budget. Well, there's obviously some work needs to be done on this, and our um, treasurer is in Colorado. So why don't I just table this until the next meeting? I'll make a motion that we table it. Second. All right. All in favor, say aye. Aye. aye.
Okay, move it on then. Um, report on the ward creation workshop. Um, the, uh, you know, basically the workshop wasn't that much of a workshop. There wasn't that much input from the public. There wasn't that much discussion. We basically went along with, uh, with my recommendation. Um, following up on that, I did send the um, boundary, the, the ward boundary descriptions to uh, the Arkansas GIS, uh, Geographic Information uh, Service. To, just to confirm that it was an adequate description to be able to create the, the boundary maps. Um, they, took, they, they, they took that data and ran it through the um, re, what she called their re, reapportionment software just to confirm if my uh, population estimates were still correct. Uh, I thought she was using 2020 census data, but she was apparently using 2019, some sort of 2019 interim data. Uh, at any rate, um, the numbers were within just a few of each other. So um, there's no requirement to have an exact population number uh, for the wards. It's only required that they be approximately equal, and I think we've demonstrated that. The law says that um, that the boundaries can't be arbitrary and capricious, and I think we've put enough work into this to demonstrate that, the, you know, that we didn't just randomly pick borders or boundaries, and we didn't, there's no obvious uh, uh, intent to isolate, you know, areas of the community or anything like that. So um, between me and, and the people at GIS, we agreed that the population estimates were, were close enough. So I asked them how quickly they could actually produce maps. And the next day I had maps. And uh, there was only one thing that uh, <laughs> Captain Obvious <laughs> pointed out they had town of Holiday Island instead of city of Holiday Island on the map. So thanks, Captain Obvious. <laughs> I don't know if you watch TV, but that's yeah, one of the yeah. TV commercials. Um, the, 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 your descriptions that you did, did they, did they use the same boundaries? Or? Yeah, they, they created maps with the, with the boundary description as I wrote, okay. as I, as I wrote it. Um, so, it's, uh, it basically followed the city boundaries and streets, so it wasn't uh, it wasn't difficult or highly technical. But I was amazed by how quickly they responded, not just in confirming population estimates, but in generating the map. It's great, just a great bunch of people down you there. Just push the button and it comes out. Well, <laughs> I think there's a little more to it. Somebody's got a. At, at least they have to key punch in the the boundary descriptions, or uh, you know somehow get that data into the into their map. So anyway, I, I sent an email back to Jennifer Wheeler and and uh, asked her to change the, the the heading on it to City of Holiday Island. I'm sure I'll get that back tomorrow. So we have ward maps, we have population estimates. Uh, I will run this by. Justin before our next meeting just to make sure that we're not overlooking something. But I think we have enough to proceed at our next uh, council meeting to be able to uh, consider an ordinance officially establishing our ward boundaries and then we can take that information to the county. How do you foresee us uh, making sure the public is aware of those boundaries? I was going to well, the ordinance will be posted on the website with the, uh, you know, with the uh, ward map as, as um, part of the ordinance, okay. and um, 
From what I read, the uh, county election officials have to notify us by mail what ward we're in. Mm -hmm. So we'll get that notification from the county. And but you'll, you'll, you'll use the bulletin boards to post the map and what have you? Well, the ordinance will be posted with the map. With the map? Yeah. Okay. Long term, I don't know that we would post the map in any public place. That, uh, it, could, it would be a document on our website. It would be the document on the website, document which on is website. the way everybody else does it that I'm aware of. So... Um, I opened up the sample we got today, and you can enlarge it. And the street names are all laid out on it, so it's yeah. it's yeah. not just it's not just a fuzzy color over top of any other map we have. The street names are clearly readable, Wonderful. and you can just blow it up as big as you need it because it's yeah. a PDF. Oh, did you post that today, or do what? Did you post that today? I didn't see it. Now. Emailed it to us today. Yeah. I guess I didn't get that email, so or didn't get it in time for the meeting. I was busy this afternoon, so Jerry called me with his yeah. stuff, but. I, I probably emailed it this afternoon because yeah. I had to take Terry to oral surgeon this morning. Okay. So, um, but it's not ready to post yet because we haven't approved it. Right. 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 Oh, so I, I thought you would want to post it prior to our approval so the public could have input. Well, we can we can do that. We can yeah. we we can put it on the kidding. we can put it out on the website and say that this we will be making this official. Um, at our next uh, city council meeting, unless we're given cause to do otherwise. And um, so now, how do you, how do you make that known to the public? The only way I know of is for you to put out on Facebook that we put something on the website, and then I'll put something on my Facebook page, and they'll get shared a couple of times. And and uh, you know, historically, somewhere between two hundred and 500 people will read it. Um, but I would have. By any chance, there's not a state statute that says we should have a public hearing on it. Anything we, like we that. We did. We had a workshop. Yeah. So, okay. And we, we tried to, to solicit public input, and there seemed to be very little interest. And How long does it, does it have to be on the bulletin board a period of time before we? Attempt to pass it? Not with the oh, there, I didn't or, find does it. Does it not take effect after we pass it until a period of time? Right. Okay. Yeah, we would probably not use the emergency clause on this. Yeah. So then it would and, be 90 uh, days. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Would that would if we did this a, with the three readings and with a, a chance. Yeah. Okay. If if we if we took the three reading um and three separate meeting approach on this particular one, it'll give everybody ample time to And there's no respond. real rush. We don't need it until right. some months from now. It's anyway. a February deadline, I recall. Yeah. 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 Okay. I well, think that will work. I recommend we do that, that we take three separate meetings and three separate readings. Right. For yeah. this one anyway. Yep. Okay. okay. But I think the legwork is done on that project, so... Um, we can kind of scratch that from the list. Um, Jerry, you want to, is there anything new to talk about on the? Well, I, I just an update on the, the uh, liquor by drink. Uh, we had a couple of questions that we've gotten resolved. The main one is um, with, with, who, with what authority can we uh, pass an ordinance uh, to authorize liquor by the drink? Uh, and Arkansas Code annotated uh, 3-9-203 D and I. Um, the county, city, or town may authorize by ordinance the sale of alcoholic beverages for own premises, premises consumption under this subchapter if the property owner's association or the county, city, or town is located in or is a county that authorized the manufacture and sale of intoxicating liquor. And so, Carroll County is a wet county. Right. Actually, the entire state is uh, a wet county, and you can uh, the, uh, you hold an election to declare yourself dry. So, so uh, if we're not. If, if no one has 
held an election to declare us dry, then we oh, can right. declare by ordinance. That, that's that's, that's what this that's and, what this uh, subsection says. And okay. there is a way to petition to be dry, <coughs> and uh, that's spelled out in in the Arkansas code. It requires a certain number of signatures to get put on the ballot. Uh, and, but we we've been. We've been uh, contacted by uh, a couple of the restaurant owners in town uh, saying this would be something that they would need to, uh, you know, to supplement their uh, services and sustain their viability. Uh, one thing uh, th that we might want to think about, and I'll, I'll draft the ordinance because I think Dan wants to get it uh, on the August agenda is uh, I've looked at ordinances from two or three different towns. Uh, one from Elkins uh, where they uh, declared liquor by drink. Uh, it was a very short ordinance that, that gave the, uh, set the hours that they could sell liquor by the drink and then basically cited the state statutes and ABC rules that uh, they must follow, and, and then Farmington, they said basically the same thing, and then they uh, listed all the state uh, requirements, so I don't know if we want to do that. I think it would be better if we just cited the statute so that if the statutes change, they will change the rules and follow those. Correct. So They'll stay current. And so the, and, and that, I, I'm still, I'm still trying to digest this a little bit because uh, because different communities have done it so differently. Um, Pea Ridge very recently, earlier this year, passed an ordinance to go to allow liquor by the drink. So I figured that would be a good example to see what they did. And they they have about a you know 14 or 18 page section oh. in their in their uh, muni code. Um, that addresses um, sale of alcoholic beverages, not just liquor by the drink, but uh, in total. And it's it they they thought of a lot of different things. Um, one thing is that they require a business license. You know, that if you want to sell liquor by the drink, you have to have a business license. And we're not ready yet to have business licenses in. Holiday Island is that a big consideration or a little consideration? I haven't, I haven't come to my own conclusion on that yet. Um, well, I mean, Pea Ridge is a, a growing, I mean, really thriving, fast-growing city, so that might be a, a source of revenue from them. But I mean, yeah. basically, we've got two restaurants. That, <laughs> yeah, and that was the other thing. I, I'm pretty sure that they have. A city tax on liquor, so um, there, you know, there's whether we whether we ad adopt that detail a uh, uh, an ordinance or not, we'll have to decide. But at least there's a lot of things to consider. It, you know, it, it's not just you know having a, a very short ordinance. I think it's I think there's more to it than just having a very short ordinance. Uh, specifying the hours and uh, you know and and, um, and then follow the rules follow the state rules would um, we be the next city or the second city in Carroll County besides Eureka I mean if we do it I, I, are any other green forest or variable I don't know if anybody else that sells liquor by the drink I know that if you look at you can go to the I, th I guess it's on the ABC website that has all the counties listed, yes. and uh, and it'll say where it's dry, where they have opted to be dry in those counties, and sometimes it says by township, like like this whole township is dry. Uh, so there there is still such a thing as townships in Arkansas, even though they seem to have no practical use anymore but they still come up in you know in codes and stuff like that but this, this would just be strictly liquor uh, by the drink 
uh, a lot of those on, on the ABC also go into uh, uh, liquor stores, which package goods, pa yeah, package goods, and uh, uh, and that's something even I don't understand yet. Is you know. Nobody, nobody can get a license. Nobody can start up a liquor store in Holiday Island because there are no licenses available in the county. They're all snapped up. Wow. However, there's a finite number of them allowed. I don't know who makes the decision as to how many of them are allowed, but um, they're, they're all snapped up. So if you can't sell packaged goods in the county, because the county won't let you, then, you know, who has, then, then why can you sell liquor by the drink? I, because yeah, it's a drink, it's not a whole bottle. Yeah. You're not carrying it out. <coughs> All of our liquor money is going to Missouri, you know. <laughs> That's where people go to buy liquor. And yeah. the uh, state law uh, requires, um, when they buy their liquor wholesale, they pay a, ta a tax to the state based on the number of gallons they buy. Uh, you know, it might be a dollar for every 50 gallons or whatever, I can't remember, but uh, that would be a state tax. Does that mean the, the Elks then could get a liquor by the drink lot? Well, that, that's a whole different set. That's I a mean, private club. That's a so private club. club. The country club could get one under this ordinance. Rebecca has a question. A if you want club. to take a question, no, under this, under the ordinance, this ordinance yeah, yeah, because a restaurant. See, the country club used to have a liquor license, and they gave it up a few years ago because it was, you know, once they started letting anybody in to play golf, then it was no longer technically a private club. Are you ready? Any, want to take a question from our Zoom audience? Sure. Uh, Rebecca, do you want to unmute yourself and ask a question? Yes, no. Looks like she's got a microphone. Oh, well, that, that's going to make it tough. Well, yeah. She's she been sent to the she wants to, oh, uh, okay. Oh, she says. It was posted about wards. We just got to talk. I guess it's not about liquor by the drink. Maybe, maybe your her question was answered. Perhaps if it wasn't, write me another note on chat. The microphone's unmuted now. Oh, it is. So she oh, yeah. can speak. Uh, your microphone's unmuted, Rebecca. If you want to say something. Oh, she doesn't have a mic. She Okay. All right. Okay. Well, we're still working on it. Maybe we'll have something by the next meeting. Um, so um, it's an active project. Okay. Uh, I just don't want to jump in there and make a mistake. So. Well, neither do I. But we can talk. I don't think anybody's yeah. pushing it. Right now. What? I don't think anybody's pushing it. Yeah, they are. Uh, yeah, they are. Robert? No, but I, I mean, I don't know if we need to go into that. Oh. Anyway. But I, there has been an expressed need. Yeah, yeah I saw that. Comment. That's a long time ago. Uh, All right, moving on. Public comments, three minute limit. There is a post from uh, Rebecca. Okay. The question is. Is it due to creating wards that everyone will have to run again for positions? No. Well, no, it's sort of. It, it's we, you know, we were all elected for two-year terms. All the council members were elected for two-year terms, so um, the terms will expire next year. So everybody has to run, and now that we're a city of the second class, we're required to have wards and have the elections by ward. So um, so it, it's really, there's there's really two reasons. Even if we wouldn't have set up wards, we would have still had to have elections next year. Okay. 
All right, moving on to public comments. Any public comments besides Rebecca's question? So any anyone out there, just unmute yourself and speak up if you have a question. Or type it in chat. Don't see anything. Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to mayor, council member comments. Make sure I don't have something buried in here I want to talk about. No. Nope. Any comments? Kent? Uh, have you heard anything back from the county on the... Oh, uh, I was going to mention that. That is something I was going to mention. Uh, I have not, and I sent Justin an uh, email today. Um, as a reminder, and uh, I'll call him tomorrow and see where we stand on that. I assume he has not heard back from the county or he would have let us know. I think they're probably going to try any more. Well, we, we need a response one way uh, or another. The other question is on the disaster funding thing. That's, that's is that kind of dissolved now or, it's, or will that tie in with this broadband thing well if we could if we could come up with a uh, if we could get this grant and uh, find out that we need X number of dollars you know, of you know money to implement it that is definitely something that qualifies under the um, the uh, American Rescue Plan Act but we are ineligible for any of the automatic funding so it would we would have to put it together in a I don't want to call it a grant application to the state because it would just be a, a request to the state and and Harlan bro called me about this particular broadband thing so I'm I'm sure that he and Bob would uh, would try to go to bat for us as far as trying to get some money as far as any other opportunities um, I asked the district to provide me with um, cost estimates or, or figures for um, shovel ready projects, although one would be a wrench ready project. One, one, because uh, you can use it on sewer water or, or um, broadband are the three things you can spend money on. And um, so we, uh, we were going to look at um, rehabbing the uh, hydro pillar uh, because it's the only one of our water tanks that hasn't been rehabbed and put in the maintenance program as one uh, one possibility um, the the jockey pumps at well five I don't know if everybody knows how our water system works but we have pumps in the well that pump the water up to a pair of jockey pumps that pump the water from there up into the tanks so that the well pump doesn't have to pump the water up, you know, all, all the way to the top of the water tanks. And, um, you know, like everything else in, you know, in our infrastructure, it's got a lot of years on it, a lot of runtime on those pumps. So we were going to look at um, replacing <coughs> a couple of those uh, pumps and then possibly rebuilding the ones that we took out, although uh, Dan is doubtful that they'd even be able to be disassembled after all, all these years. So um, those are the, the three things that we're working on. Any other council member comments? All right. Going on to scheduling the regular meeting. When is the third week of August? Be the 18th. <laughs> the, the 17th, yeah. August 17th. Yeah. Do we want to try to have a, we got a work planning session. commission meeting before that? How about the 10th? We had a workshop plan. What was the workshop on? On um, health and safety ordinances. Yeah. Oh, well, that would, yeah, that's different from the planning commission. Right. What, 
what's more important at this point, probably the Planning Commission. We haven't publicly announced the uh, or scheduled the, the workshop for the 10th yet. Let's change it to a Planning Commission meeting. August the 10th. For City Planning Commission. City Planning Commission. Time? Um, you know, it doesn't, how much, how many participants did we have tonight? Um, on Zoom, we had, besides us, we had two. Besides so, us and our minute taker, we had two. So, to me, it's not necessary to have a meeting at six o'clock at night. Uh, because it's obviously not um, generating a lot of interest. The recommendation I would make, uh, City Planning Commission will involve uh, in the future contractors bringing proposals and plans, so business hours from them would be more convenient. We might start by setting a precedent, precedent of having the City Planning Commission during the day. Works for me. Now, August 10th is a Tuesday. So it's got to be in the afternoon. <laughs> okay. Why? Thank you, Dan. <laughs> Some of us can't play anymore. So. Is that, will there be any conflicts with That's this room? Some of you could play. I Anticipating we'll have that meeting in this room? Um, I said is they always have their meetings at 9 o'clock in the morning, so I don't think yeah. it would conflict. All right. But if it did, um, unless we... I don't know if we could set Zoom up, I and mean, we could definitely have it at the well, table there, in the office. Down there, there are some advanced notification requirements for commissions, city yeah. planning commissions, so we need to have it far enough in the future we can give proper notice. It has to be open, too, doesn't it? Right. Mm -hmm. I don't know we get older down there. For the overflow crowd? Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, sure as hell, they'd all show up. 2 p.m.? <laughs> when? 2 p.m.? 2 should work, right? I do have a site to be determined. I might still have my golf shoes on. Linda has a conflict. I have a carpet cleaning scheduled. It may not be done by two. I had to wait a month to get them to come. <laughs> three? Just saying. Actually, three you know, I think the three, meeting. three works for me, and you know, it, it doesn't make me any difference. The closer you make it to mealtime, the more likely the meeting won't drag on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so our first meeting I don't think will take very long. It's, you know, 3 p.m.? 3 o'clock. I like that. Okay. I don't know I get my mid-afternoon nap then. You can nap. <laughs> 3 o'clock isn't mid-afternoon, that's late afternoon. <laughs> All right, any announcements? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Ken made a motion to adjourn. Second. Jerry, second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We're adjourned. Okay.